I said that there will never be another black messiah. Uh, it, it's going to be a powerful demon. Mm. They're going to kill the messiahs, homie. And build the demons. That's why King Vong is so revered and admired in the industry. They don't want a messiah. They need demons. Uh, drill music is a demonic force. And all the kids are professing and confessing to be on demon time. Never in, her in history have we ever heard black people say, I'm a demon. And don't believe in God. What's good, my niggas? Niggas, N-E-G-U-S. Not niggas, N-I-G-G-E-R-S. Or N-I-G-G-A-S. Niggas, N-E-G-U-S. A ruler, a king of African, black, Nubian origin. Niggas. Niggas. Um, what is the language of origin? Uh, Ethiopian to Amharic. Um, what is the definition? A king. It's used as a title of the sovereign of Ethiopia. Negus. Negus. Could you use it in a sentence? The Negus ruled Ethiopia until the coup of 1974. So peace to all my Negus. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earths. Today we're going to get into an ill topic. This topic is about Alistair Crowley. And who is Alistair Crowley? Alistair Crowley is a main reason behind why our children are killing each other out here. Alistair Crowley gives us occult magic. Occult magic. And all of your favorite rappers and celebrities, uh, top businessmen, the people that run the fashion industry, the liquor industry, all of those people are part of a religion that was founded by a man named Alistair Crowley. And we be seeing a lot of weird things going on, but we don't have no idea of why these celebrities are doing these weird things. Why are they throwing up symbols? Why? What does it all mean? You know what I'm saying? What's the purpose of them? Uh, would you like me to show them how the sign of the curse works? The sign it's of the curse? Completely different. How does it go? No, not at you. Not at you people. <laughs> this is the sign of the horns. A curse sign. The two fingers extended. This way, spread apart for sort of shotgun blast. I believe that hate is necessary in a controlled way just as much as love is necessary. And whether you believe it or not, whether you believe it or you don't believe it, they believe it. Whether you believe it or don't believe in it, they believe in it. And you blindly believe in them. Facts. Actual facts. This is a story about a man who spoke to demons. A man who went by many names in his life. The Beast, Brother Perbduro, or Ankh Afun Kosu. He was an occultist, a student of the dark arts and supernatural phenomena, founder of the religion Thelema, and a publisher of books on magic and the paranormal. His followers regarded him as a visionary and a champion of free expression in a closed-minded society. His enemies branded him as insane and capable of great cruelty to those around him. The devil incarnate, or a troubled visionary that was simply misunderstood. It's all a matter of perspective. This is the story of Alistair Crowley. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Alistair Crowley called this the most sublimely austere ethical precept ever uttered to human beings. I pray the Lord my soul to keep uh, Do without will what you think Platinum first day the album on creep Crowley declared that his writings were to be quote circulated among the young end quote Crowley predicted that America would pick up quote a few axioms on which a working majority can agree a few dogmas which it could rally Do what thou wilt of course became do your own thing and if it feels good do it in the 1960s <laughs> Do what I want. Do what you want, what you want with my body. Cause my mother let me do what I want. They do what they can, I do what I want. I do what I want. Yes. I'm gonna do what I want when I want when I want. Yeah. 
Golden Dawn. The group believed to possess ancient knowledge. They studied esoteric teachings, medieval Jewish Kabbalah, and performed magical ceremonies, which included ritualistic drug taking. Members of this group included Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes. Adopting the name Brother Perabduro, Alistair impressed all those around him, displaying an extensive knowledge of occult literature. As a result, he quickly rose through the ranks. But his roguish lifestyle of excessive drug taking and bisexuality made him a controversial figure and led to a number of feuds with fellow initiates. Those around him spoke of his, quote, unappeasable desire to control people and that he also had, quote, a tendency to quarrel savagely with anyone who disagreed with him. Many fellow members refused him from ascending further ranks. A schism soon developed within the order, which led to Alistair leaving shortly after. I do what I want, what they say. No, I do what I want. Baby, I love you. I do what I want. Three, two, one. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the world. Disillusioned with the order and its rigid hierarchy, Crowley retreated to traveling. With the funds his father had left him, he journeyed to Japan, China, Sri Lanka, and India. He continued to climb, and even joined an early expedition to climb the second highest peak on Earth, K2. During his travels, he was introduced to Eastern philosophy. He studied the teachings of Taoism and Buddhism, as well as practicing yoga. He decided to include various hard drugs into his curriculum, like hashish, opium, and certain hallucinogenic substances. In 1902, at the age of 29, Alistair found himself in Paris. There he met a woman named Rose Edith Kelly, who was also interested in the occult. Although she was initially betrothed to someone else, the two had an affair and swiftly got married. For their honeymoon, they decided to go to Egypt. As with all things Alistair did, this trip would prove to be far from normal. In usual Crowley fashion, he set up a shrine in their hotel suite and began recounting spells and incantations invoking the various Egyptian gods. What happened next is Crowley's later recollection. I do what I want cause I'm signing me. Be a good baby, do what I want. I do what I want. I say what I want. Surely I'ma do what I want. I do what I want cause I'm supposed to be faded. Mr. Crowley has been um, instrumental throughout music uh, for a long, for before I was born, you know what I mean? Uh, Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, um, there's a lot of great artists that, you know, are the um, building blocks for even hip hop. The story goes that his wife, Rose, suddenly fell faint and became unresponsive. All she could murmur were the words, they are waiting for you. They, as it turned out, was the god Horus. As if led by a spirit, his wife took him to a nearby museum, all the way to a stele dating to the reign of Pharaoh Hatshepsut. Looking down at the exhibit number, it read 666, the number of the beast. Suddenly, a voice from the depth of Alistair's mind called out. It called itself Iwas, and it claimed to be an angel. It told Alistair to write down all that it said into a book. For the next three days, Iwas dictated its words to Alistair, who dutifully wrote them all down. What he was left with was a small tome entitled The Book of the Law. Opening the first pages, the book was replete with spells as well as discourses and philosophy. A key teaching of this book was that humanity would soon enter a new age, the Aeon of Horus. In this time, mankind will overthrow Christianity and finally take control of their own destiny. To achieve this goal, there was but one simple commandment, quote, do what thou wilt, every man and woman is a star, the word of sin is restriction. In other words, whatever you feel like doing, go and do it, regardless of popular opinion or conventional morality. Well, I would just want to leave you with this, uh, you know, my album is called Do What Thou Wilt. And it's based off, um, it's influenced by um, Crowley's The Book of the Law. Love the Lima. Yeah. Believing himself to be a reincarnation of an Egyptian prophet, Ankh-Uthin Kosu, Crowley returned to London and founded a new religion. He called it Thelema, a Greek word meaning desire. It was based on the teachings found in the Book of the Law 
and promoted a life of hedonism and radical free will. It was a fusion of a number of religious traditions, mixing elements of Western occultism, Jewish Kabbalah, Theravada Buddhism and yoga. To accompany spiritual practice, Crowley advocated the heavy use of psychedelics. In 1907, he founded his own secret order, the AA, believed to stand for Argentium Astrum, the Latin for Silver Star. Owing to Crowley's notoriety in occult circles, the AA quickly grew in number. Soon, he released a periodical for its members, the Equinox. During this time, it was rumoured that Iwas had contacted him again and instructed him to write more holy books. Things were going well for Alistair and his nascent movement, but nothing good lasts forever. One of his strangest legacies has been in the world of music. Crowley has since become an icon of a number of countercultural movements, especially in punk and rock and roll. He can be found here on the cover of the Beatles' 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Crowley's words have made their way into the lyrics of songs by David Bowie, Ozzy Osbourne and Iron Maiden. Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page even bought Crowley's Scottish manor, Bolskin Lodge, but soon left the property after claiming that it was haunted. One of the things that Crowley did was cherry-picked all these different ideas from different philosophies, different religions. So we've got Hinduism and, and uh, Islam and a lot of the Kabbalah, um, a lot of ancient Egyptian deity as well. The Kabbalah is a collection of Jewish magical texts which were given to mankind via psychic communion with a fallen angel called Raziel. Raziel is one of a pantheon of so-called fallen angels who serve the light bringer Lucifer. The Kabbalah describes the many angels and demons who inhabit the spiritual realm. At first, at first sight, he's a, you know he's the wickedest man alive, right? That's what he, you know he's a very wicked man. But if you dig into if you dig into the poetry and you you know you read between the lines of his poetry and you know. You dig into his story, a lot of the things that you know make more sense to you. This philosophical religion is heavily based on the practice of magic that Alistair Crowley put together. That's magic with a CK at the end. Love is law. Love and will. One of the main sort of tenets of his religion was that sexual energy and sexual power was a way of literally sort of manifesting your will in the world. I, who am all pleasure, desire you. And a lot of the rituals were designed to sort of, you would focus your intention and you do these rituals which involve some sort of sexual act in some way or another. Love is the law. Love under City, Guru Devi. And that that was the way in which you sort of made this magic occur. Also a great quote is, uh, the righteous will remain righteous and the filthy will remain filthy. So, um... Cancel my subscription to the resurrection. Jim Morrison, the Lizard King. Jim was a fan of Aleister Crowley, the Beast 666. In 1970, The Doors released Doors 13, their first greatest hits compilation. The back cover featured a photo of the group sitting around a bust of Crowley. Jim subscribed to the philosophy of antinomianism, which is essentially a rejection of laws and legalism, arguing against moral, religious, and social norms. Writing for a publicity release for Electra in 1967, Morrison stated, I am interested in anything about revolt, disorder, chaos, especially activity that seems to have no meaning. Looking to the work of the late Dave McGowan to learn how The Doors and other bands of the 1960s seemed to have a unified agenda, and of their connections to military intelligence and mind control operations. It's fascinating research. Here is an iconic photo of Morrison that has hung on many teenagers' walls. Teenagers who never realize that he is striking the pose of Osiris slain in Crowley's Ordo Templi Orientis. And even do what thou wilt itself, you know, free will is what it kind of sounds like, right? Do you know what I think? What? I think you know. 
you know too much about me. What do you mean? I can do anything. Now, you know? I can kill you. Right here on this bed. And then I could phone room service. And they they take your body away. And then I'd have them send up another girl. A quote from a Rolling Stones interview that you gave at the time saying, I believe very strongly in fascism. We oh, need a dictatorial right-wing tyranny. What was that about? Um, I think that was probably uh, a bit coke driven. Yeah. <laughs> it was also part of, I was, I had, I fell into the trap of this, the black magic, uh, cabalism, and um, the whole idea of the, uh, just the Crowleyism of, you know, the times. It was a significant part of that middle point of the 70s and uh, I really got completely disoriented by all that. It was an awful, dreadful period for me. I'm closer to the golden dawn Immersed in Crowley's uniform Of imagery I'm living in a silent film Portraying Himmler's sacred realm of dream reality. Portraying Himmler's sacred realm of dream reality. For all his fame, are we guilty of glorifying the life of Aleister Crowley? By all accounts, he was not a likeable man. Many biographers recount his exceptional cruelty and ability to alienate those close to him. His conversations with spirits and demons could be a symptom of an underlying mental health condition exacerbated by his untreated addiction to alcohol and drugs. Today, we might throw all kinds of medical diagnoses at him, sociopathy, narcissistic personality disorder, disassociation, and drug-induced schizophrenia. Genius, insane. Visionary, fraud. Freethinker, cult leader. Perhaps he's all of these things, or none of them. However you choose to remember him, Alistair Crowley will be remembered, nonetheless. Lesson. I call upon my ancestors when I need protection Cause you'll be lost with no direction 
Christ in this hellish western hemisphere With Satan seeking frequent re-election Or should I say democracy forsaking pre-selection It seems we never fucking learn the devil's evil lessons Shit makes me wanna go and murder with the Smith and Wesson You sneak with rappers, wear your vest, you best protect the precious Or you'll be out here walking funny wearing women's dresses Who's the goal of all this rap shit, let's quit the guessing The answer's hidden in the question, what's the connection? Man, what's the reason I'm for murder?